So I was thinking to myself one day, I wanted to learn how to do networking. I wanted to be able to make a multiplayer game that uh, operated over a wireless area network. And it turned out to be a lot more difficult than I thought because I couldn't figure out how to set up a TCP socket. There was a combination of a high barrier of entry with the fact that there were firewalls I didn't know exist. So um, I encountered a lot of trouble and I'm here today to show you how to avoid that trouble. I'm going to teach you how to set up a TCP socket as well as what to look for when trying to get past your own firewalls. So let's start with the firewall piece. I have uh, three firewalls in my case, one of them being the computer and two from routers. It turns out that I had forgotten AT&T Uverse asks you to go through their um, gateway, their modem. So I had done all the port forwarding necessary to get past my own router's firewall, but I forgot about the Uverse modem. So I would recommend if you also have Uverse or some other similar two router setup that you set up a DMZ on the outermost router and then port forwarding on your innermost router. If you prefer, you could just do port forwarding on both routers but that adds an extra step. I also recommend uh, with the PC firewall that you consider setting up a rule, but if you just wanna go the easy way, you can just turn off your PC's firewall and that will allow traffic through. So let's get to the code and uh, we'll try and explain things as we're going forward. When you're setting up a TCP socket, and a socket is that thing that allows you to transfer data over a network, the first thing that you want to do um, is you want to segment your code into two apps, one for the client and one for the server. Now, if you happen to be using a peer-to-peer -peer network, then it'll look ever so slightly different from this, but you're still essentially transferring data in a similar way. So, um, what you can see here is I have a server-sided app, and that one is console app 6, and then I also have a client-sided app, and that is console app 5. What I've done in Visual Studio is I've created some console apps just to highlight that this is purely um, code-driven, and this is not a feature of Unity or anything like that. I usually make videos for Unity. So in Visual Studio, if you're not sure how to make a console app and you want to follow this tutorial, um, you click on File, and then you press New and Project, and when you do that, um, if you have the correct packages installed, then you should have consoleapp.net core or something similar right around here, and you can name it right over there, and then you just click OK, and it will start to create things. If you don't have those packages installed, that's something that you can Google, and you can get the results really, really quickly. So, um, let's begin. Whenever I'm establishing a connection, I like to start with a go-to loop. And that's just because if I catch any exceptions, then I can try and connect again. Um, if you don't want to use a go-to loop, you don't have to. But it's just something that'll make it a little bit easier, like it'll automatically attempt to retry. I also use a try and catch because if I don't, then Visual Studio yells at me whenever it's not able to connect properly in a given amount of time. So, on your client-sided app, this is the app for the user, not the server. We're gonna start by establishing a TCP client, and you need to tell it what IP address and port you'd like to connect to. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I've opened up port 1302 so that I could connect uh, via my local IP address. 127.001 is localhost. Um, if you're trying to connect to your own machine, same machine that you're um, putting your server on, then that's the IP address you'd use. If you wanted to connect from an external IP address, then the way that you set it up is um, in your client-sided app, you'll input your external IP address, and then you use port forwarding from your router to point towards the machine that's actually running the server. So again, your client-sided app would have your external address, and then your router settings would have the machine that's actually um, the server. You have to use port forwarding to pass from the external to the server. Okay, 
So um, once you've established a TCP client, then you can start to build the data that you want to send. Your data must be sent in a byte array. So whatever you're starting with, you have to convert it down to a byte array. And then once your server has received that byte array, then you can convert it back into whatever data type, type you like to process. So I started with a string, and I'll call that message to send. My name is Neo. I turned that into a byte array by doing the following three lines of code. I start by figuring out how many bytes is it going to take using encoding.ascii get byte count. And then I create a byte array using byte count. And lastly, I use encoding ASCII get bytes and I turn it into bytes. The next step is once I have that byte array, we'll call that a buffer, then I want to create a network stream. So the network stream is memory allocated for the network communication. I'm going to call this network stream stream, and I'll use the TCP client that I created earlier to get the active stream. I'm going to use um, a write function that's um, like part of the stream to send my byte array buffer starting at zero and specifying the length of that buffer. I want to get some kind of message on my own end that says, hey, we've started to write to the stream. So I went ahead and put console.write line sending data to server. Okay, so let's kind of talk through um, which parts of the communication phase we're at along the code. If we're in this first segment, then we have now connected to a TCP server. So right over here, this is where the connection is established. And then once we've connected, then it moves on to the next line of code. So right here, we are connected. All right, at this point, uh, we've built our buffer and we're ready to send it. Right here, we have sent our buffer. When we get to when we get to this message, I guess our buffer is officially sent. Okay. All right. What do I want to do next? I want to get some kind of response from the server that says, "Hey, you know, I sent my data, and now you've got it, and you're sending me something back." So this time, I want to read from the stream rather than writing. So I can try something called a stream reader, and a stream reader makes it a little bit easier to get that data rather than getting a byte array, it'll kind of like do some of the processing for me and I can get it back as a string instead. So in my stream reader, I'm going to specify a string is equal to streamreader.readline. At this point, it's going to wait. So my program will wait until the stream has something ready for me to read. And then once I get that full read line, then I can use that. So once the, the data is sent back to me, then I can write a line. Now when I'm all done and I'm ready to close the connection, then I want to call a couple of lines down here, stream.close and then client.close. That way I can close that memory stream that's been allocated and then close my client that's connecting me to the other device. After I've closed my client and my stream, um, because this is just a Visual Studio app, I do want to put something like console.readkey or I can put go to connection or well, I, I guess you would not want to go to connection because then you'd have this infinite loop and it would just it would send a lot of data. But um, console.readkey or console.readline, that will keep your program open. Okay, so that was all in the try. That's what's supposed to happen. What about with exceptions? You want to catch your exceptions and then give yourself some kind of feedback. So in this case, I wrote console.writeline failed to connect. Simple as that. You don't have to worry about flooding your screen with failed to connect if something goes wrong because uh, it does have a certain wait time before it will go to the exception. All right, so that is our client-sided app. If I start that up by itself, then what will happen is this. Fail to connect, fail to connect, fail to connect. We don't have a server that's open right now. So it's not going to be able to connect to our TCP client. 
let's go ahead and move on to our server-sided app. Our server-sided app in my example is console app 6. So with the server, you start things slightly differently. We're not interested in establishing a client right away. Rather, we open up a TCP listener. Now the difference here is a TCP listener will open one port on your device. So the way it works is you have your IP address and then you have like something like 65,000 ports. And uh, when you open up a port on the device, then you can start accepting clients on that port. Most of the first thousand ports, um, you don't want to use those because they're reserved for certain things internet related. But after that, then pretty much you can use any port you want. If you open up a TCP listener on a specific port and then you specify system.net IP address any, then you can accept clients from any IP address. If you want clients from only specific IP addresses, I believe you'd place that right over here. Once you've created this TCP listener, it's important to say listener.start and that actually opens up the port. Starts listening for incoming connection requests. Okay, so now we're gonna do while true. And um, when we start listening, we want to give ourselves some kind of message waiting for a connection. We establish a TCP client with anybody who is trying to connect to us. So accept TCP client will accept a pending connection request. And then we're going to write a line again that says we accepted a client. We allocate some memory into a network stream uh, by creating a network stream and then creating a buffer down below. So for our network stream, we want to get it directly from the client. We want it to be connected to that client. Um, you can do either of these two lines of code if you want to simplify the data transfer, stream reader and stream writer. It's, it just helps you to transfer data as a string rather than as a byte array. Okay, so on our server, we're expecting the client to send us some data in the beginning. So since we're expecting them to send us some data, we need to create a buffer so that we can receive the data. And then we actually receive the data with stream.read. So remember, our stream is our network stream. That's our memory allocated to the network. So when we read from our network stream, it's going to wait until it receives that data. Once it receives the data in our buffer, so that's what we received, we received that byte array, then we can go through our buffer and um, check where the bytes are actually used and where the bytes are not used and then we can just count how many bytes did we actually use. We can take those bytes from the buffer and how many bytes we actually used and turn it back into a string. Once it's a string we can write the line that says we've received a request and this is what it says. Now if we want to send some feedback so that they can um, know that we received their request and it's all been processed, then we can do something like streamwriter.writeline. Once you've written a line, the next thing you want to do is flush and that will send the message to the other device. So if I comment this out, I'll show you what happens. We're going to go ahead and test this app without flush and then with flush. So I'll start up my server app. And I'll place my server right over here. Now I start up my client app. And I'll place my client right over here. As we can see, the server started waiting for a connection. As soon as the client app started, the client was accepted, a request was received, my name is Neo, and then it says waiting for a connection again. But on the client side, it never got past um, this part right here after it said sending data to server. So let's look at the client's code. It says sending data to server and then it uses a stream reader to try and read a response. So we're stuck at this line of code. Because we haven't flushed the memory stream, it doesn't tell us um, what the line actually is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to close these two apps and then go back to our server-sided app. And we're gonna add in that line of code, oops. We're gonna add in that line of code right over here. Stream writer, I'm pressing the wrong button, sorry about that. 
streamwriter.flush. When we flush after we've written a line with a streamwriter, it should now send our message. So let's go ahead and hit play. Now, just so that I'm not blocking the, the screen here, I will start my app from my other monitor. Great. So now we're waiting for a connection, client accepted, request received, and then we actually send our response back to the client. And it says, you rock. So that's it. That's how you create a TCP socket, and that's how you can start a conversation between client and server. Um, once you've established that connection, then they can continue to communicate back and forth. Um, I did want to show this at probably the lowest level to help you establish an understanding of what's going on with those network communications. There are some pretty common tools that are used in programs like Unity um, that make things a lot easier rather than sending byte arrays and stuff like that. It kind of simplifies the process. Um, all those networking solutions, they work, but if you don't really understand what's going on, it can be kind of hard to work with them. So anyway, that's my video. Hope you liked it. Hope it helped out and uh, make some cool games. See you guys in the next video.